Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, je me lève en chambre pour parler au projet de loi 27. Um, <coughs> et ce projet de loi um, prescrirait à 10 jours de congés de maladie payés pour tous les travailleurs et travailleuses du Nouveau-Brunswick. Et, Monsieur le Président, c'est un, un projet de loi essentiel pour les travailleurs et travailleuses du province. Et une partie du projet de loi est aussi que euh, nous voulons appuyer les petites et moyennes entreprises pour les aider à faire cette transition. Alors, c'est une un partie importante du projet de loi. Um, and Mr. Speaker, this is not the first time that we've brought this issue to the floor of the House, and even in the form of, of a bill, um, to ensure that workers in New Brunswick have paid sick days. And as part of that, to ensure support for small and medium-sized businesses to be able to, to make that happen. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is about protecting workers and Im improving their rights. The, the minister uh, responsible um, for post-secondary education training and labor <coughs> said um, himself, employment standards need to, be, need to be modernized, that act needs to be modernized. And this is one really important piece of that, uh, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Non-unionized workers depend on this legislation for their rights. And it does need to be modernized, does need to be strengthened. Because right now, Mr. Speaker, if a non-unionized worker who doesn't have access to, to paid sick days becomes ill, they are not guaranteed that paycheck. They will lose income if they don't go to work. And what does that mean, Mr. Speaker? That has implications for their household if they lose income, and it has implications for their workplace and for our broader community as we've all become, to a certain extent, really well-versed in what it means for disease to spread in our community. This is a public health issue. So this is not only about individual worker rights, this is also about public health policy. This is about preventing viruses from spreading in the workplace when someone's sick allowing them to stay home, Thank you. not only for their well-being, which should be of concern to legislators here, but also for the greater public health, for the greater good. And so, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> of course, um, unionized workers, you know, as part of their agreements, would have things like paid sick days. And of course, I'd love to see more unionization, but in the absence of that, those non-unionized workers, those workers who don't have those protections, those workers who have to choose between staying home sick and paying for their bills, and at a time like this, when inflation is, is through the roof, it's, it's become even more pressing, Mr. Speaker, that we do our jobs and legislate paid sick days in New Brunswick. And of course, a motion, um, an amendment is on the table to send this to, to Law and Amendments Committee. And as a member who m may, might be one of the, the MLAs to propose sending bills to Law and Amendments uh, more than, than most, uh, I agree that this should go to Law and Amendments. I'd be pleased to see the legislature <coughs> look at, at this bill you know, we, we've talked about wanting to, to hear from people uh, on, on bills that come before the House to make any amendments that are needed to strengthen it and to move it through and make it law that people have these protections and that we support small and medium-sized businesses in doing so. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, this is not a new issue. This is something that predates the pandemic. It's always been a problem that certain people don't have paid sick days. Right now, there are five unpaid 
days, sick days, for workers. But Mr. Speaker, I think of, of real life examples. How do people make ends meet? How do people figure this out? If they have a child or children who get sick, I don't know how people are making it work this fall if they don't have paid sick days and whether they themselves or other people that they take care of are, are ill and often the illnesses are lasting a week or two, I don't know how people are, are doing it. So they're either taking a, a cut to their income or they're needing to go to work, they're needing to send their kid to school or daycare. Um, and again, what that means, it's not fair to them and it means that viruses can spread more easily, Mr. Speaker. And so, like I said, this was important before the pandemic. But the pandemic made it even more clear and hopefully opened some people's eyes to the need for this type of legislation. And right now, with RSV and influenza and COVID circulating in our communities, this is urgent, Mr. Speaker. So this is a worker's right issue and a public health measure. It is, the, is it the only thing that needs to be done to strengthen workers' rights or to address public health? No, but it is something that should be done as soon as possible. And so, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to, to reference the this report done by Dr. Jim Stanford, um, the Center for Future Work, talking about the estimates, um, looking at the cost of paid sick days and, and looking at the benefits, Mr. Speaker. And, and so, of course, there are certain co considerations um, and they, they would be, um, we'd need to look at, at what this means for New Brunswick. One of the things to consider is that some workplaces do already have this in place, but we need to think of the, the workers who don't already have this in place. We know unionized, federally, federally regulated, that there are workplaces that have this. But when we look <clears throat> at the benefits, Mr. Speaker, improved attendance among sick workers' colleagues who are less likely to become ill themselves if sick workers stay away. Mr. Speaker, that's one of the key things that they found, and that's exactly what, what we could all guess. If someone is ill and they stay home, then their co-workers less likely to get sick. And so, Mr. Speaker, that adds up, that holds water. That is a clear thing we can do to, to protect workers and protect the co-workers and protect our communities. Another key finding, <clears throat> reduced absences for sick workers. This comes from the fact that then they can attend to their own health requirements more quickly. Thanks to the paid sick days, ill workers can recover and return to work more quickly. So they're able to rest and recover and get back to work. And this is connected to this <laughs> word, presenteeism. So reduced presenteeism. Because in some cases, workers, if financially <coughs> compelled, will attend work even though they're unable to fully perform their duties. And the resulting loss of productivity and efficiency is significant. Um, and talking about BC, they're talking about billions of dollars per year in lost output. Attendance benefits of preventative health when workers can use paid sick days to undertake preventative health measures. So think about being able to miss, miss work in order to get vaccinations and do checkups and other pro proactive measures, and then they're less likely to need sick days in subsequent periods. So I'm sure every member here has heard me talk about the importance of preventative health care. Well, this is actually something that can contribute to that and reduce the need for them to take sick days later on. We talk about recruitment and retention, recruitment and retention. Well, Mr. Speaker, staff recruitment and retention. So at a moment when employers in many industries are complaining about challenges in recruiting and retaining staff, the provision of basic employment benefits like paid sick days will improve morale, reduce turnover, and aid in recruitment. Mr. Speaker, this can actually help with our recruitment and retention challenges. This is something that's really important. People look at wages, but they also look at benefits. And ideally, we wouldn't think of paid sick days as a benefit. I think it should be a basic right. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, this is important in terms of 
the labour market. This is an important, this should be the new standard that people have paid sick days. As, um, excuse me, as was mentioned before, business reputational value. So looking at the business practices, um, I know that um, there are different labels that can be on products. Well, this is along those lines of, we're not talking about necessarily organic or, or fair trade, but we're talking about good business practices. We're talking about how are the workers treated, and this is very important, Mr. Speaker. Um, and then, again, going back to, in the context of a pandemic, where unless you've been hiding under a rock, you should understand how viruses spread in, in our communities. Stronger public health outcomes, Mr. Speaker. So no individual employer uh, can single-handedly protect public health, but we know that um, when we don't have paid sick days, and we don't provide basic health protections, then it increases the risk of community <coughs> contagion. And so, Mr. Speaker, these are clear findings that support the need for paid sick days. And, and it is, I, I, I like to, to think of when we talk about taking care of the economy, the economy should serve us, Mr. Speaker. We, we create the economy. We create the conditions for the economy, for businesses, for workers. And we have a, a special responsibility as legislators to create the conditions for workers to have these paid sick days, to have these protections, to have these rights, and to take care of people, Mr. Speaker. And it can be better for the economy, better for these businesses, and better for the workers. And so, of course, as we mentioned, it's very important and it's, part of, it's written in here, a financial support program written in this legislation to help small and medium-sized businesses to uh, cover financial costs associated with making this transition, with ensuring they can protect their, their workers. This is something that, that we've heard from, from businesses say, that they, they want to be able to do this, they, they'd like this support to make it happen. Um, and, you know, a conclusion that, that I'd like to, to draw on, and that is found in this report as well, it, I, I want to quote this, after the catastrophic economic and human consequences of this pandemic, it would be short-sighted folly to contemplate returning to a situation in which workers are compelled by financial necessity to keep working when they should stay home for the good of themselves, their colleagues, and their community. Mr. Speaker, I don't know how anyone could argue against this. And as I said earlier, and when I asked in question period, I'm, I'm looking for a strong commitment. I'm, um, there's a glimpse of hope, okay. We'll send this to law amendments. I would be pleased if the legislature does its job and it goes to law amendments. And then what I would like to hear is a strong commitment and a guarantee that at the end of all that, that workers will be guaranteed paid sick days, because that is what this is ultimately about, Mr. Speaker. And so um, I would like to hear some stronger commitments from the government, but I, um, I am, I don't know, uh, I'm measured in how hopeful I am, but I, I really do genuinely hope that as legislators we can do what's right. We can move things forward, we can uh, modernize this legislation, we can strengthen workers' rights in the province, we can make better public health policy. Mr. Speaker, this is an opportunity we have, and so uh, clearly I, I will support uh, sending this to law amendments, and I, I support um, Bill 27, um, tabled by the, the leader of the Green Party and the sec second official opposition, and I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the chance. To, to speak to Bill 27 and this chance to, to make the case for paid sick days supporting, um, obviously, the small and medium-sized businesses and, very importantly, supporting the workers, les travailleurs et les travailleuses du Nouveau-Brunswick. Merci, Monsieur le Président.